Dave Meltzer is a wrestling reporter born October 24th, 1959, who has been running the Wrestling Observer since 1984, and who, as much as some people might not want to hear it, is probably the most prominent wrestling news journalist in the world. And just like how dirt sheets have always had their detractors, so does Dave Meltzer, and Meltzer at times has found himself in the centre of public outrage or public attention. What's up guys, it's Tomo Top 10 Wrestling here, and today we're going to talk about a few of those times. From fake news, to friendships ending, and getting every WWE wrestler to hate you, these are the Dave Meltzer controversies. Before we get into it though, check out and subscribe to Wrestle Club, a brand new project by me that I'm announcing in the next week or two. Get subscribed to that channel to be the first to see the announcement, and let's get in to this video. A Twitter thread was released, oh god, about how Dave Meltzer may have been releasing false information about the Japanese wrestling promotion Dragon Gate from as far back as May 2022. Phew. Okay. This Twitter thread was released by Mike Spears, who is the host of Open Voicegate, a Dragon Gate podcast. Let's have a read of this thread. Read any good fake emails lately? Let's talk about how the sausage is made. The last seven months, actual breaches of journalistic ethics versus tribalism, and our old friends Dave and Nasawa. So first off, I acknowledge we aren't working with perfect information here. I'm going to refer to dates, but all of this is my own personal experience with this overall story. I'm doing this to separate from Case's stellar article because I don't want to detract from his work. So this weekend of May 20th was in Fort Worth for the first time in 15 years. So this is kind of etched in my brain in the way those events tend to be with people. I had someone reach out to me to vet a Dragon Gate related story. This isn't uncommon and rather routine with OTVG, etc. Over the years, I wouldn't say that Case and I developed a network of sourcing and folks, but you do get talking with people and over years relationships form. Again, not uncommon. So this person out of the blue got an email claiming to be a Dragon Gate wrestler. They didn't provide me with the email at the time, but it was the email Case had in his DG piece. Without seeing it, things really did not add up enough to pass my personal smell test. I told them I'd ask around, but I told them given what we knew, I doubted its veracity. I wouldn't run with the story without verifying that was the wrestler. Send a photo with a paper with the email address written on it, identification, you know, knowing the identity. English. Although taught at schools, I knew that wasn't common in Dragon Gate. Later talking with sources in and around the company, May 21st, revealed that the wrestler in question was in no way fluent in English and probably never heard of the outlets they were alleged to have contacted. So the person who contacted me, I'll say it now was Joe Lanza because he publicly has talked about using us for betting, passed on it. A few days passed. Enter Wrestling Observer Live. Now I both respect Semp for doing the Japan coverage before I started and I think the wrestling news is a cool concept, but it was very clear when Alvarez and him went on air that week, I don't have the date here right now, that they didn't do any legwork before going on air. Others got involved afterwards and it comes out that folks did ask this emailer for identification. According to what I've been told, they were provided an obviously fake company ID, one second on this, and later backed away from talking about the email when corrected. So this company ID, funny thing, no company IDs. It's a wrestling travel troupe that has worked together for upwards of 25 years. Why do you need them? Now day of media types? Sure, make sure they're ID'd, but not a wrestler who everyone knows. Several sources within Dragon Gate corroborated that they do not have company IDs. So no matter how you feel about the email, at this point, we know that the identification provided does not exist in reality. So if you get an email claiming to be someone and ask for identification, and you get something that, if you ask people within the company, they could have said, no, that's fake, we don't have them, do you run with that story still without any more vetting? Everyone who has taken a single reporting or media writing course in their lives, no, I would vet more or spike it. Dave Meltzer, lol, I don't care if people who have worked for me or given me information for decades say no, I'm publishing the contents of the email and the sour. And when you think that I'm insinuating that people with long established relationships with Dave try to go, Dave, I wouldn't run this, it's not true, and Dave ignore them to publish, that is exactly what I'm saying. And if you've followed me since May, you've probably been tired of me pointing this out, but at no point has Dave offered any explanation, retractions, or addendums about this story, his journalistic process, or why he was so set on printing when no one else would. 
And to my knowledge, please feel free to correct me, no outlet other than Open Voice Gate and Voices Wrestling have been willing to challenge Dave on this. I'm going to stop reading it there because it's been about five minutes now. But basically, the gist of all that is, if you're confused, is Dave Meltzer started receiving emails from who he believed to be Dragon Gate wrestler Kaito Ishida. Of course, the email did not belong to it, but Meltzer fell for it and he began reporting and publishing stories that were being fed to him by this fake email. People told him to stop, people told him not to run the stories, he did it anyway. This fake email was also in contact with other journalists who quickly debunked it and didn't publish the stories. Meltzer never bothered to do this apparently. Following this thread and numerous other callouts to him regarding this, Meltzer would finally respond with this video being posted on Twitter on January 16th. All right, we got to uh, do a quick correction here regarding some Dragon Gate news. Oh, more than a correction. My yes. God. Yeah, so I mean, we have, we've never talked about it on this show, but in The Observer, you know, I have written about stuff, and oh, my God, what a, you know, I mean, it's just, what can I say? I mean, um, I did not know that I was being hoaxed, and I was being hoaxed, and I'm so, you know, I feel horrible about it, obviously. I mean, um, it's not, I'm, it's not a minor thing to me, obviously. It's a, a big, big thing to me, and um, I better never let this happen again. So I'll just say that. The Iconics got um, boringed out. Uh, you know, they, they're another one. I don't, you know, I thought like that they had like a cool act in NXT and on the main roster, I don't get a thing out of them. I mean, I don't think their promos are particularly good. Their wrestling isn't good. I didn't even, I think they even like, I think Peyton Royce's transformation to look more attractive. I don't know. I don't want to say, but I don't think that. I, she I was more know. attractive in NXT? I thought so. Yes. To me, yes. I would say so. But. You know, that's, that's neither here nor there, but... Um, no one's saying she's unattractive, by the way, everybody. I know, no shit. Yeah, I didn't say it at all. But I don't think, like, she doesn't stand out to me. When she was in NXT, she did. Well, you know, one thing I've noticed about NXT she was the main lot, she, roster is... She was, she was a lot lighter. The NXT character... Some of you may remember that clip that you just heard, and some of you also may remember the absolute poo storm that this clip caused. This clip of Dave Meltzer talking about Peyton Royce of the Iconics and of WWE at the time was posted on Twitter and caught the attention of Peyton Royce, who said the following. So what would you have me do, Dave? Starve myself? This is how nightmares for young women start. The females in your life must be proud. And following this tweet, it was absolutely on sight on Dave Meltzer from any WWE wrestler or fan alike. What a true piece of sweltering hot garbage. You're an angel too good for this earth. He'd be lucky if you gave him the time of day. If I may offer you some advice, F them. And of course, the infamous minus six stars Dave from Seth Rollins. Dave Meltzer would tweet out an apology to Peyton Royce saying the following. I'd like to apologize to you. You're an exceedingly attractive woman. I do realize the lengths and pressures on women in the entertainment world to maintain unnatural looks at times, and I'm glad you pointed this out. I would love to. That's why I thanked her for the post and hope we can all learn from my mistake. But yes, it is my mistake. Not passing any bucks nor making any excuses for it. I've learned and hope others can learn from my mistake. For this next portion of the video, I'm going to retweet that took place between Jim Cornette and Dave Meltzer from the day their friendship sadly ended. Dave, I've been sick all week, so F it. You call this Harpo Marx mother effer a goddamn genius at match layout. Better than Flair and Steamboat. Blah effing blah. He wrestled SEX dolls and kids. He's a phony clown and embarrassment. F him. Quit swinging on his dick or F you. F. It's a goddamn embarrassment to me. I've told people for years you're a smart guy about wrestling and now you've got these phony play wrestlers so far up your ass that you're making an idiot out of both of us. If kids playing video games in the ring is what wrestling is now, let it die. He then followed up with, Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for ever defending Dave Meltzer against people who said he was an idiot. Dave, I hope the balding Fs and Olivier sucking up to you are worth you looking like a lunatic. Better than Flair Steamboat? How about smellier than my dog's shite? F. 
By the way, I haven't mentioned it, but I'm trying not to swear because I don't want to get demonetized. Uh, new YouTube policies and all that, in case you haven't noticed. Dave, you're effing senile. It's not too many spots. It's blatant phony silliness and mocking of the business right out in the open. And you know that. But you can't get off Olivier's jock and just admit it. For F's sake, act your age, not like a Japanese schoolgirl. Hashtag Riho. Dave Meltzer would finally respond to Jim Connett by saying, You mean like a manager with a tennis racket and a tag team that crawls on its hands and knees to the manager to hug in the middle of a fight? How come that doesn't happen in boxing and MMA? Cornette responded with, More like an asshole who lies because he desperately wants to hang out with the cool kids so people don't say he's out of touch, and sacrifices all his credibility to say Harpo Marx is Frank Gotch. You know he sucks, Dave, and I guess you do too. F you, lose my number. And just like that, the Dave Meltzer Jim Cornette friendship came to an end. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, a bit of a different one today, but if you did enjoy then be sure to smack that like button, let me know what you want to see next on the channel in the comment section down below, subscribe for more videos with notifications on so you never miss them, subscribe to Wrestle Club, links down below, I'll see you all in the next one, goodbye and keep on rolling.